Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to a special OAA Now football preview show. This is the group of death known as the Red Division. I am Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, host of Last Three Brain Cells and host of Between Terminas on Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Neighborhood Television. This week we're going to preview, as I call, the group of death, known as the Red Division. Last couple weeks ago we previewed the Gold Division, uh, and then we had the Blue, and then last week we had the White. This week we have the Red. So let's look at the, these five teams, of course, these five proven state championship quality teams when you look at this division. Let's start off with the Highlanders of Rochester Adams. When you look at the Highlanders this year, last season was a rough year for them. I mean, like, really... Really interesting year for them, but they've somehow gotten the playoffs. So here's Adams coach Tony Petrito at the podium talking about the Highlanders. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Tony Petrito. I've been the head coach at Rochester Adams for over 20 years now, and I'm also very proud to be part of the OAA. Uh, our season last year was very disappointing. Uh, great kids. They worked really hard, but we didn't accomplish what we wanted to. Uh, these guys have worked their butt off to try to get, get us back where we belong, um, trying to compete for the OAA Red title. I'll let them introduce themselves. Wayne Canyon, senior, offensive tackle and defensive end. Tommy Offer, senior, DB and slot. Mateo Humbert, uh, senior, running back and linebacker. Faction Battershell, safety, slot, senior. James Schmidus, senior, O line and D line. Um, this particular team has chosen a model of courage for our season. Um, we we're greatly motivated by a young man named Steve Gleason. He's just won the award from Arthur Ashe Award in the ESPYs, demonstrating great courage. And uh, he has sent us a personal message in 2021 before the state finals. And he, ampl he amplifies everything about our sport and everything about passion and courage. So hopefully we can live up to the expectations he set for us and we set for ourselves. We open against Romeo week one. Let's go OAA. Before I get an interview with Coach Petrino, he had to leave for the day. But I did get a podcast interview with Coach Petrino to talk about the Highlanders. And then talk about your defense. Obviously, you got one of the best defensive minds in the game. So talk about your defense a little bit, if you could. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's where it begins and ends. You know, it's like Mark McClellan's, I, you know, I like to make the argument he's the best coordinator around. Um, and I'm not trying to offend anybody else. But if you look at what he's done with us at Adams over the last 22 years, you know, rarely we don't have a competitive defense. Um, and he does, he puts our guys in the best position to, to be successful. We've obviously changed a little bit over the years from an over under four, three to more of an Oki front. But one thing I always trust coach McFarland to do when he has complete autonomy is to give our kids the best chance to get our defense off the field and hopefully our offense back on the field. Before I let you go, coach, um, what are the expectations this year at Adams? Obviously, you know, you look at Adams, always a perennial power within the red, obviously. Um, so what is your expectations this year? Well, I, I think it's, it's you got to be reasonable. And it's like, you know, you could be a really, really good team like Oxford or Adams and win two games in the OA Red or no games in the OA Red. And there'd be no shame in that, to be perfectly candid with you. But our expectations, like 21 and 22, is to win the league. So um, last year was not good. We had three league losses, and that's just not acceptable. So, But we know we have a very small margin for error. If we're not executing at a high level, no pre-snap penalties, no turnovers, we have to take care of the ball and finish drives with touchdowns, not field goals. We know we, as Adams, to beat the biggies and to beat the great four teams in our conference, we got to play close to perfect to win. So that's what we're going to strive for. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but we're going to give it our best shot. Adams coach Tony Petrino here. Thank you for calling in this week here on the podcast, and good luck this season, and good luck against Romeo week one. So when you look at Adams this year, people look at Adams, you know, obviously return to quarterback in Ryan Waters. Um, you got Mateo Humbert at running back um, at linebacker and also um, Leonard Tillerson at wide receiver. Those are some players to really watch for with the Highlanders. I got concerns about their depth this year, but, you know, when I talk to Coach Petrito, you know, he's very confident with this team heading into the year. When you look at the schedule for Adams, I mean, it is very daunting. They go... Week one, they take they go to Romeo to take on the Bulldogs um, at Dan Barnable Field. Um, Adams and Romeo are no strangers to one another. Four and four in the last couple years. Um, they battled in the playoffs. So, 
This should be a really interesting matchup between two very similar teams, um, but different philosophies when you look at both Adams and Romeo. Of course, Adams is a veer team. Romeo more of likes to sm play that smash mouth, spread, spread you out kind of football. So it'll be a very interesting matchup between the OA Red and the MAC Red to kick off week one in Macomb County for Rochester Adams. Week two, it's the Falcon Frenzy game. They t Adams take goes to Rochester, take on the um, the um, high, the um, Falcons. Um, Adams has owned Rochester. Um, they haven't lost to him since 1996. Um, this is going to be an interesting matchup. I mean, like Adams, we know what they bring to the dance. I mean, we know that um, you know, and last year it wasn't close between them and Rochester last year. I mean, Rochester's a pretty young team. They got a little bit more veteran heavy this year. Adams. You know, they got a little bit more of a veteran-heavy team this year when you look at it. Um, week three is Adams' home opener. They take on West Bloomfield. Um, this is going to be an interesting matchup. Of course, last year it was West Bloomfield who knocked Adams out of the playoffs. Um, they beat them twice last year. So this should be a really interesting matchup. These two teams have had some classics um, between the Lakers and the Highlanders. So that should be a really fun matchup between those two teams. Um, week four, they take on Clarkston. And... When you look at Adams and Clarkson, they've had some battles. Um, last year was Clarkson that got Adams last year, so it should be a really interesting matchup between the Wolves and the Highlanders, especially with that one over at Rochester um, between the Wolves and the Highlanders. Week number six, week number five, it's Lake Orion. I mean, Lake Orion got Adams last year, 35 nothing. Um, the last time Adams win the Lake Orion, they won over there. Um, so that should be a really interesting matchup between the Highlanders and the Dragons. And I think that should be a really, really intense matchup of two teams that are really, um, that should be playing a high level of football right now. Um, week number six, it's Oxford, of course. Adam, they go to Oxford. Um, Adams, um, you know, blew out Oxford last year. Um, it was not a pretty game though, but um, it should be a really fun matchup between the um, Highlanders and the um, Wildcats. So that should be a really fun matchup there. Week seven at Stony Creek. Um, Adams last year went to Stony and um, won that one. Now it's at Adams, so that should be a really interesting matchup there of uh, two city rivals. Um, week eight, they take on North Farmington. The coaching matchup between um, Coach Herstein and Coach Petrito. Going back to the days at Harrison um, with um, legendary Coach John Harrington on the sidelines, of course, and Coach Herstein was um, Harrison's defensive coordinator. So that should be a really fun matchup between those two teams. And then week nine, they take on New Baltimore, Anchor Bay. A matchup of different styles between Coach Petrino and Coach Mike Gioni. Um, Anchor Bay, of course, last year played Stony Creek, lost both games by combined two points. So when you look at Adams this year, I know they're projected to finish last in the um, coaches poll. I don't think they're a, a last place team in that poll. I think when you look at Adams, they're going to be a very scary team again. I don't think anybody wants to see the Highlanders heading in the year. And I think Adams, to me, this year, this could be a very, very scary team this year when you look at the Highlanders, especially with the offense. They run the Veer, op the Veer offense, obviously, that triple option offense um, that Coach Petrino runs. It's a really dangerous offense, you know, really tough to prepare for week in, week out. And Adams, I expect them to be a um, very formidable this year. And I think Adams will be a very dangerous team this year. Uh, what's going on from Adams? Let's go to the Wolves of Clarkston. When you look at Clarkston, I mean, like Clarkston last year, they, 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 I mean, it's, it was hard to figure this team out last year. 500 team last year, managed to get the regional final a year ago. So here is Coach Justin Pintar at the podium talking about the Wolves. Uh, Justin Pintar, I'm the head coach here at Clarkston. Uh, we have four captains with us here today. I'll let them introduce themselves. Lucas Bowman. Uh, junior, running back, and safety. Griffin Bowman, running back, linebacker, junior. Drew Ball, senior, O-line, D-line. Brady Beck, senior, wide receiver, DB. Um, and again, thank you to Coach Vernon for putting this together. Again, great event that we've had going here at uh, with all the teams coming together and again a chance to showcase what I think is is the best conference in in Michigan um, as evidenced by what he said earlier with what 20 or only two seasons in the last 23 years where we haven't had a team playing in a in a semifinal so um, that just goes to show you how competitive this league is um, and and going into the season we talked to these guys every game is going to be a grind it's going to be a, a battle week in and week out 
Um, but we feel really good about what this team can do. The last couple weeks, the energy that these guys have brought in practice, the intensity that they've brought in practice has probably been as good as I've seen in the 10 years that I've been with the varsity program. So we're excited. We're looking forward to the season getting started. Um, and good luck to everybody in the league. And uh, hopefully we have an injury-free season for everybody. Thank you. When you look at Clarkson this year, the questions are there, especially at quarterback. Um, I know um, Brady Collins, he left um, Clarkson to go to UAD Jesuit this offseason. So now when I talked to, um, to Coach Pintar, I talked to him on the podcast. You can take a look at the, at the podcast at um, Saginaw Bay Frisbee Smithy at um, blogspot.com. Um, talk about the quarterback situation with Clarkson. Um, they're gonna, this is going to be a team that relies a lot on the Bowman Twins. And... Obviously, you know, when you look at the Bowman Twins, they're the real deal. So I caught up with Coach Pintar to talk about the state of the Wolves heading into the season. I got the coach of the Wolves, Coach Justin Pintar here. Coach, um, how's that quarterback situation looking for you? Good. Uh, we got a couple sophomores right now. We got Alex Wyshenko and Mick Mahaffey, and um, they've kind of been battling it out throughout the summer. And um, Monday, when we finally get a chance to kind of start putting everything together, those two will continue to battle. And um, you know, we'll, we'll try and have a decision, you know, probably sometime after our scrimmage, we'll get a good chance to really evaluate them against some live competition and, uh, and kind of see. But they're, they're both, they're great kids. Um, their teammates like them. They are, uh, they're athletic. Um, Alex is, is quick. Um, and has the ability to kind of escape out of the pocket. And then Mick is um, hes probably one of our fastest guys. If we lined up everybody and, and ran a 40, he's as fast as we got. So um, we feel really good about what they bring us, not just in the pass game, but also in the, um, in the run game, because we do like to use that as a counter to our, to our run stuff. So Talk about the Bowman Twins and your schedule, obviously. You know, I mean, like, it's not an easy schedule when you look at it along with the Twins. Yeah, so um, Griffin and Lucas are, um, they'll be three-year varsity guys um, in just junior, so we'll have those guys for four years. Um, they just compete, and uh, they're, they're really athletic, but it's that competitive part um, that really kind of sets them apart, and that's what would earn them a spot on varsity as freshmen was um, they just don't shy down, they don't back away, um, and we talk a lot about guys playing their speed. I mean, a lot of guys can go out and they can run a 4.640 or a 4740, but do they play that fast? And, and Lucas and Griff both play that fast. So um, we're excited to see what they can do in year three. Um, all the experience that they have under their belt is going to be a big, uh, a big part of why this team, I think, can be really successful, especially on the defensive side. Talk about the schedule. Yeah, so um, in terms of our schedule, obviously the, the OA Red is uh, super competitive. Um, I expect every one of those games to be a battle. And then um, non-conference, we got Belleville week one, and um, you know they've obviously had a lot of history here. The last two years they've been in the state championship game, winning one and, and coming close in the second one. And uh, Obviously they present such a unique um, uh, situation with what they have at quarterback. So we're just looking forward to that opportunity. I've talked to the guys quite a bit about, um, you know, you'll be one of the only guys that have this opportunity to go play the number one player in the country, and, and that guy's a quarterback. So um, if you're any kind of competitor, like your juices should be flowing. You should be excited about having that chance. And um, as a coach, we're excited to have that chance to, to kind of drop some, uh, some stuff defensively and see what we can do against them. What is your expectation this year, Coach? So our, our expectations every year are the same. We, we talk to the kids every year about we want to go out there and, uh, and win the league. So uh, one of our goals every year is always to win the OA Red. And um, if you can do that, you know you have a team that can, can go and compete for a state championship. Um, and then after the OA Red, it's, it's obviously get into the playoffs. And once you're in the playoffs, it's we want to go win a district. We want to go win a regional and get back to Ford Field and, and compete for a state championship. So uh, every year, I think that's our expectations, is, is we want to try and get to Ford Field and play for state championships. Um, and, and obviously, that's hard to do. And, and you're not going to be able to do it every year. But that's always our goals going into every season, is win the Red, win, make the playoffs, and go on a little run. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. When I look at Clarkson this year, the biggest concerns I have beside quarterback is defense. And, you know, you look at the stats, the defense, the stats don't lie. I mean, like 24.1 points a game last year, um, points allowed. That's a little bit high for Clarkson standards. Um, so when you look at the Clarkson schedule this year, the schedule, you know, you look at it and you, opening up the year at Wayne State against Belleville, um, pretty daunting task, you know what I mean? Obviously, Belleville's got a lot of proven talent. 
led, of course, by their quarterback, Bryce Underwood. Um, it'll be an interesting matchup to see. I will be curious to see how Clarkston matches up this one. Of course, Belleville, let's not forget, won the Division I state championship. They knocked off Adams um, a couple years ago. And then, of course, last year they had that loss to A&T um, where they ended up losing that one, 36-32. Um, so Belleville... And I read the Detroit Free Press, and they, they're they going to be motivated. They're motivated for that game. I know they're motivated to finish the mission. That's what they're saying in the um, Free Press article. Um, so that'll be a really daunting matchup for Clarkston, taking on a very good Belleville team. Um, week two, they take on A&T on the road. Um, it should be a really interesting matchup. Um, last year, um, A&T knocked off Clarkston 2017. Um, it was a very tight game, though, but... Um, Clarkson's defense played really, really well on that one. So that'll be a really interesting matchup there. Week three, take on Oxford. Um, a, it's a big, it's a good matchup. I think it'll be a really interesting matchup, especially the Bowman Twins on one side. Then you have Luke Johnson on the other side. Um, Jack Hendricks on the other side as well, um, which that should be a really interesting matchup there. Um, week four, they take on Adams. Um, Again, this would be a very good matchup. I mean, Clarkson got the um, best of Adams last year. Game's now at Rochester. It's going to be a very interesting matchup between those two teams. And then week five, um, West Bloomfield's going to host Clarkson. Um, actually, no, Clarkson hosts West Bloomfield, by the way. Um, second straight year that's happened. Of course, Clarkson knocked off the Lakers behind the Bowman Twins last year um, in a very high-scoring game last year. So... It's going to be very interesting to see how that one goes there. Um, week number four, week number six, um, they take on Troy Athens. Um, this is an interesting matchup because it's at Troy Athens. Um, Athens runs a wing tee. Um, it should be a really, I mean, like, it's, it's a mismatch on paper when you look at it, but I just think, you know, with Clarkston, I mean, like, um, it should be really interesting to see how that one goes. Week seven, they take on Lake Orion. Um, there's a trophy game on there, and that one, of course, Lake Orion knocked off Clarkston in the regular season meeting, 42-41, but Clarkson got Lake Orion back in the playoff game, district final, 38-37. So that should be a really interesting matchup between those two teams. Week 8, Bloomfield Hills, um, <coughs> I think it's at Clarkston. Um, pretty sure that's Clarkson's homecoming. I'm not sure if that is or not, but... But I think that will be their homecoming, most likely taking on Bloomfield Hills. And then week nine, they close out the year hosting um, Utica Eisenhower. Of course, last year was not a pretty sight at Swinehart for Clarkston um, in that one um, when, with the Eagles knocking the Wolves out, uh, knocking them off in that matchup. So when you look at Clarkston this year, a lot of questions, a lot of optimism. I know the good folks at Independence Community Television is going to be film live when broadcasting Clarkson games this year. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how Clarkson does this year, considering you got some strengths and they got some weaknesses. Program strength, they always will have this year. They will always have a Clarkson with program strength. A little concerned about the defense. Actually, very concerned about the defense. Very concerned about the quarterback spot. Um, so a lot of questions for Coach Justin Pintar's team at Clarkson this year heading into the season. So there is a lot of concerns when you look at the Wolves. Now let's look at Clarkson's arch rival, Lake Orion. And when you look at the Dragons, um, last season, went under, had an undefeated season in the regular season, just couldn't get in the playoffs, um, following um, two Clarkson in, in 38-37 last year. Um, some big changes, particularly at running back and at linebacker. So here is Lake Orion coach Chris Bell at the podium talking about the Dragons. Good afternoon, everybody. Great being here, great seeing everybody. Appreciate uh, the press making time to come out. And uh, it's always great seeing the teams, coaches, the athletes uh, that, that uh, we're gonna see in person or read a lot about. With me today are our captains. I'm gonna let these guys introduce themselves. Landon Morris, O-line. Trey Tokmar, running back in DB. AJ Light, safety. Tristan Hill, quarterback. Jackson Bossies, slot receiver. We're excited. We, uh, we return 11 starters from last year. Uh, we return a lot of experience and size on the offensive line, an entire secondary. Uh, we've got real good skilled kids coming back. Uh, we've got a good great JV group coming. 
Uh, and like everybody else, these guys have worked hard. They've done the things necessary to give them an opportunity to compete in uh, probably the best league in the state of Michigan. You know, our goals are pretty simple. You know, with our, our schedule, you know, our goal is to compete, you know, for the OAA Red Championship where every game is a war. And we feel like we're playing great football at the end of the year to give us a chance uh, in the state playoffs. You know, I, I was also with uh, Coach Vernon looking at the OAA because, again, I believe this is the best league in the state of Michigan. I'm going to take this a step further. I look at the past 15 years. In the past 15 years, we have had 15 teams playing for, for the state championship. We have eight state champions within the last 15 years to come out of this league. So the reason I say that, this year, you know, we have, uh, for the first time in a long time, we've got some gold and white crossovers. We've got some blue and red crossovers, as well as your ordinary crossovers. You know, playing great teams in this league just makes you better as Harper Woods can attest. You play great teams in this league, when you get to the playoffs, you're gonna be battle tested. So look forward to those great games. Uh, take care of each other. Yeah, again, we're, uh, we're competitors, um, but re you know, respect the teams in the OAA because we all do it the right way. So good luck to everybody. Wish you great seasons. Thank you. The Dragons have a lot of optimism. They do return their quarterback in T.R. Hill. They got a player in Jackie Vasquez coming back. Um, defense, they return um, their, a lot of their entire secondary. They got some very good proven linemen up front. The concerns that I have are very great with Lake Orion, particularly at running back and also at linebacker. So I caught up with Coach Chris Bell to talk about the concerns that face his Dragons this year. I got the coach of the Dragons, Coach Chris Bell here. Coach, um, obviously la successful last season here. So. When you look at this season, your running back and um, linebacking issues got some question marks. Well, it's like that every year. It's high school football. You always graduate good kids. We've got uh, some great kids coming back. We've got some good kids coming up from the JV. So we've got we've got bodies. We've got candidates. We think we're going to be really good at those positions. That's part of high school football. We get a chance to teach them and coach them, and and uh, those guys get to step in, make a name for themselves. And so we think we're going to be fine. Talk about your schedule. You open up with Northville Week One. I mean, that's a very tough schedule when you look at it. Yeah, from Northville, uh, the week two, you got Stony Creek, who's going to be good with Ricky leading them, um, the OAA Red, and then finish with Celine. Every week is going to be a dogfight. That makes you better. You know, we, we want to play good teams. Iron sharpens iron, and if we can uh, make a run in the OAA Red and uh, be playing great football at the end of the year, we'll be battle tested, and hopefully, we'll make a run in the playoffs. What is your expectation this year, coach? Our expectation is, is Lake Orion will be in the thick for the OAA Red Championship. We're going to be a playoff team, and uh, we're going to be that team that nobody wants to play come playoff time. Thank you very really much, Coach. All right, guys. Thank you. When you look at the Dragons, of course, we do have the Lake Orion football preview show on the ONTV website. Uh, if you want to take a look at the, um, if you want to go dig deeper into the um, Lake Orion Dragons season, of course, my um, between Termina's co-host Anthony Termina does a really good job with the um, preview show, talking with Coach Chris Bell, talking about the um, he the expectations heading into the into the season. So I encourage you all to watch the um, Lake Orion football preview show um, on the ONT on ON TV and also on the ON TV website. Um, I will ha I have a posted link on there on the blog at Saturday May 4650 at blogspot.com for um, to cover the Lake Orion Dragon football preview show. So let's look at the schedule for the Dragons. I mean, they open up the year at Northville. I mean, obviously you look at that matchup, um, Northville lost a lot of talent a year ago, but they do have some talent coming back. So, you know, it'll be a fun matchup. I mean, obviously, you know, Lake Orion, um, you know, last year went to Livonia Stevenson, took on Livonia Stevenson at Michigan Stadium and blew them out. Um, Northville, Different animal when you look at Northville. I mean, like they're projected to be one of the top teams in the um, Lakes Valley Conference West uh, in the um, KLA West Division this year. They're favored in that division, according to their coaches over there. So that'll be a really fun matchup between um, Lake Orion and um, Northville. I did listen to um, Northville coach Brett Luplo on his podcast on the um, Casey Campbell podcast. Um, he talked about the um, that matchup. Um, between Lake Orion and Northville. It's going to be a really, really interesting game. He called Lake Orion a great team. So that should be a really, really fun matchup there in that one. Week two, they travel to Stony Creek to take on the Cougars. Um, when I look at Stony Creek, obviously, the line, obviously, Spencer Beekman, you got Peyton Rumbler, you got, um, 
you know, they got Sam Fogart running back. Questions at quarterback is a big question for me. Um, I expect that game to be really, really interesting. It's also Rick Powell, uh, former defensive coordinator at Lake Orion. Um, that should be a really, really interesting matchup between two teams that, um, you know, they know each other quite well. Um, they played each other last year. Stony Creek battled and competed with Lake Orion. Um, but Lake Orion found a way to win that game against Stony Creek last year. So that should be a fun matchup between the Dragons and the Cougars in that one. Week three, take on Troy. Home opener for the Dragons. I know the good folks at on TV are going to have that game. Um, Troy, you know, this is going to be, Troy's been a very good team the last couple of years, but they haven't really played the schedule though. And I think that's going to be the key matchup there is, you know, I think that's going to be, that's going to be Troy's statement game to see where they're at. Lake Orion, obviously, we know where this team's been. I mean, so it'll be a really interesting matchup. So, but I know Lake Orion cannot afford to look ahead, especially when you have week four, when they go to Oxford to take on the Wildcats and obviously the double O trophy game on the line there in that one. So, you know, Lake Orion knocked off Oxford twice last year. Um, you know, one of the regular season wants the playoffs. Um, so when you look at that matchup, it's always, it's going to be a, always a battle between the Hatfields and McCoys um, when you look at that matchup. So that should be a really, really fun matchup this year over at Wildcat Stadium. So that should be really interesting there. Um, September 27th, they host Adams. Um, you know, when you look at that matchup, it's going to be interesting. It always is interesting when you play Adams, um, especially with the Veer. Um, Lake Orion, of course, got a new defensive coordinator um, this year, and that'll be something to keep an eye on. Um, so that'll be really interesting there. And then week, and then week number six, um, October 4th, I remember talking to Tyler Keith, the Civic Center TV, um, about this matchup. It's going to be a street fight between Lake Orion and West Blue in the swamp. Um, when you look at that matchup, obviously, um, you know, I think this, that game could be a shootout. I really think that game could be a possible shootout in the making. Both teams very good offensively. Um, there's some questions on the defensive side considering for West Bloomfield. Um, but that game could be a likely shootout in the making over there in the swamp between the Dragons and the Lakers. Week 7, it's Clarkston. Obviously, Dragon fans are still very upset about that 38-37 loss last year. Um, in the playoffs, um, they knocked them off in the regular season. So this should be a really interesting matchup between Lake Orion and Clarkston um, in that matchup there. Week number eight, it's Farmington at Farmington. Um, you know, Far Lake Orion knocked off Farmington, blew them out last year. Um, so that should be a really interesting matchup there um, over at Farmington. And then week nine, Celine comes to Dragon Country. Um, Tommy Carr takes over the reins of quarterback. Celine's got a new football coach there. Last year's game was a classic 35-28 win for Lake Orion. Um, that was an intense classic. Um, you know, both teams battled really hard in that game. And I think, you know, when you look at any time Lake Orion and Celine plays, it's always going to be a really tight game. Um, Celine's got a new coaching staff, as I mentioned. So when I look at Lake Orion this year, you know, this team could be a very dangerous team this year like they were last year. Now, there's some concerns that I mentioned with running back and linebacker. But when I look at the Dragons, you know, they, I mean, like, this is a team that should be a very, very dangerous team heading into the year. Um, when you look at them, Coach Bell and the, um, and the um, jet motion offense that that team runs. So Lake Orion's a team that is a very, very scary team when you look at, at the Dragons heading into the year. Uh, let's go now from Lake Orion to Oxford. Um, when you look at the Wildcats this year, this is a team that, you know, Oxford's a team that really, you know, they're, they're a physical team. They're, they're a... Um, they're mentally prepared, and they're one of the best, t best kept secrets in the OA. So here's Oxford coach Jack Line here at the podium talking about the Wildcats. I want to thank uh, Coach Vern for hosting again. This is always a great event. Um, I'm Zach Line, head coach at Oxford High School. Um, this offseason uh, has probably been one of our best. Um, going from the weight room and into the camps in June and July, we've had really good attendance, and I attribute that to our senior group. We have 24 seniors this year. Um, I have four on stage with me right now. I'll let them introduce themselves. Duke Johnson, senior, running back, linebacker. Uh, Drew Cage, senior, kicker, punter. Owen Pavlock, senior, receiver, and DB. Uh, Eli Carpenter, senior, receiver, defensive back. William Barr, senior, offensive line, and defensive line. Drew's also a tight end, but he likes to 
live in the kicker world. It's all right. Um, like I said, this group is that we, we go as they go. Um, our word this year has been identity. Uh, we know the outside perspective or perception of Oxford, of who we are. Uh, we want to make sure that teams and towns, when they come to play Oxford, they learn who we are. We work hard, we hit hard, we act right, and we finish the right way. Um, all four of these guys, and all 24 of our seniors, a good bulk of those guys have played multiple years or at least a year on varsity. So we have good depth. Um, we start the season this year at Utica Eisenhower, looking to represent the OAA the right way. Good luck to everyone in this room. Thank you. So when you look at Oxford this year, I mean, they do return one of the best running backs in the game in Luke Johnson. A uh, person that wasn't there on media day was Jack Hendricks. I expect him, he's going to have a monster year this year. I'm really, really high on, on Hendricks. I'm also really high on Johnson. I am a little concerned about that receiving group, though, with Oxford. Even though I did talk to Coach Line on the um, podcast about it, at Sag of course, I will have a link on the podcast at Saginaw Bay, 4650 at blogspot.com to, to, if you want to go more in depth about the Oxford Wildcats um, in my um, interview with Coach Zach Line there. But I also did catch up with Coach Line about explaining the Wildcats in an interview at Media Day. I got the coach of the Cats, Coach Zach Line here. Coach, um, how is the... Um, How's the offseason been going for you? It's been really good. Um, you know, like I said during the, the media day today, we've had a really good attendance in our um, offseason strength conditioning. And then jumping right into our June and July camps, attendance is the best it's been. So you can't keep installing. If guys aren't there, you're constantly going backwards. So um, our senior leadership, we have 24 seniors this year. Um, and, a, and a bulk load of those guys have played at this level, at the varsity level. So um, they kind of set the standard. And um, you know we go as they go. Talk about that murder's row with schedule you got. You got Ike week one, you got Macomb, Dakota week nine. I mean, like, your schedule is absolutely brutal this year. Yeah, you know, smashed in between that is the OAA, which is, which is awesome. That's what we want. You know, you heard it a, many, a million times a day. Um, if you're going to make a run in the postseason, you got to go through the OAA and get, and get ready. So, um, obviously, winning the OAA is, is the goal. Um, you win the OAA, you're set up for success. So, um, it, we just take one game at a time, and we're prepared for everybody. Where's the expectation this year, Coach? Um, you know, I, I want to see our guys going into training camp. I'm never going to forecast ahead. I want to see how we compete in training camp. Um, I want to see guys win spots, and I want to see guys um, take pride in playing this game um, at a high level. So um, there's going to be a lot of attention to detail this, this training camp. There's going to be a lot of um, individualized meeting time, making sure guys understand their roles. But um, I don't want to have any questions on game day that they know what they're doing. They can play fast. Thank you really much, Coach. Yep, absolutely. When you look at the Wildcats, you got to think about Grit, toughness, and, the, and, the, and Oxford pride. You always got to think Wildcat pride when it describes Oxford. When you look at the schedule this year, it is brutal when you look at it. I mean, really brutal. I mean, like, this is probably the most brutal I have seen in probably almost, since I've been doing this podcast, probably the most brutal I've ever seen. Open up the year week one, going to Swinehart, taking on Utica Eisenhower. That is... Difficult. Last year, Ike went into Oxford won, I think it was 20 to 6. Um, now, the only reason why Oxford lost that game is because of turnovers in that one. But still, I mean, Ike, yeah, they're a little bit weaker than they, are, they were last year, but still, it's Utica Eisenhower. So that's a really difficult opener for Oxford week one going to Swinehart to take on the, um, to take on the Eagles of Utica Eisenhower. Week two, you get the defending Division IV state champions. Coming to your place in Harper Woods. And they probably are going to have one of the most dynamic offenses in the entire state. The last time Harper Woods went this far north, they went into Clarkston and just destroyed them on their homecoming. So this is going to be a really, really difficult matchup for Oxford. Um, could it be a shootout? Maybe. I mean, like, because, you know, Oxford obviously got Luke Johnson, they got Jack Hendricks um, at quarterback. Um, receivers, I mean, obviously you got Owen Pavlock, Jake Champagne, the um, Oxford basketball great over there. Um, so that should be a really interesting matchup week two. Um, and there's always been some magic with week two at Oxford, obviously. A couple years ago at Groves, um, remember that one really well. Um, and then week number three, they take on Clarkston. And that's an interesting match. It always is interesting when Oxford plays Clarkston. 
Always expect tough games, always expect close games with them. Um, and I expect this one to be no different. Um, week four, the rivalry game with Lake Orion, the double O trophy game. Um, this would be a fun matchup. I mean, like, you know, anytime it's Lake Orion Oxford, it's, you got the Hatfields and the McCoys. I mean, this is not going to be an easy matchup. Um, this is going to be, you better bring your hard hats for that one, obviously, when you look at the Hatfields and the McCoys. So that should be a really fun matchup between the Wildcats and the, and the Dragons. I mean, that's going to be a fun one. Week five, Rochester at Rochester, homecoming game for them. That should be a really interesting matchup. Um, I think that should be, that'll be a really, a battle of the running backs between Jack Lauer and, um, and um, Luke Johnson. That should be a fun one. I mean, you know, I would pay admission. I mean, if, you're, if you want hard-nosed running football, that should be a good one for you um, with Rochester, between two very good running backs um, over there at Falcon Stadium, uh, at Rochester Stadium. And then week number six, they take on Adams. Um, you know, it's at Oxford. I think it's Oxford's homecoming this year. So that should be a really interesting matchup. I mean, like, when you look at that matchup of two teams that are, um, you know, last year Adams got the best of Oxford. It was not pretty. I mean, like, over at Adams. I mean, like, so it'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. Week number seven, West Bluefield game at the Swamp. Um, should be really interesting. I mean, like, obviously, you know, um, you look at that matchup. I mean, Oxford... You know, that of West Bloom will be tough, but it, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, like, I know Tyler Keith calls Oxford the, um, the big blue trap game, and I think that is going to be that for West Bloomfield. Take on an Oxford team that's going to be loaded with a lot of experience. Week 8, they take on Oak Park. Um, it's at Oxford. Um, this should be a fun one, obviously. Of course, um, Oxford blew out Oak Park last year at Wildcat Stadium. And then week 9, they close out the year with Macomb, Dakota. I mean, who in the right frame of mind booked that one? I mean, like, I would, I would really want to know who did that because Macomb Dakota's senior heavy team, loaded with experience. Um, and so it's going to be a really interesting matchup to see where Oxford goes. I mean, when you look at that schedule, I mean, <laughs> it is brutal. I mean, a lot of those games this year, of course, will be on, a, on Oxford Community Television this year. So... I know the good folks at OCTB really, really well. Um, they'll do, they do a very good job over there. Um, so when you look at Oxford and that schedule, it is going to be brutal. So, you know, that is a brutal schedule. So a lot of those games, of course, will be on Oxford Community Television. So that'll be something to really watch for um, when you look at Oxford this year. Um, so we'll see what happens with them. Um, let's go now for, to, from Oxford to West Bloomfield. Um, when you look at the Lakers this year, a lot of expectation, a lot of high hopes this year. I mean, like, last year this team um, lost a lot of talent, um, replacing some key players. They brought in some players um, this offseason. So here is West Loopia coach Jack Kilbers at the podium talking about the Lakers. Hey, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Zach Hilbers, head coach at West Bloomfield. Uh, again, want to thank uh, Coach Vernon and Rochester for hosting us and start off by congratulating Harper Woods and Southfield uh, for representing us last year with the uh, state championships. Uh, a lot of coaches have talked about the depth of this league and they're spot on, so I don't need to go into that at all. But uh, you just know it's a grind every single week. Um, really grateful for, uh, I think it was Coach Royal who brought a big crew like myself. Um, I'm, I'm a rule follower, like I'm a teacher, I'm a coach, I believe in following rules, but when I was sitting here deciding like who I was going to bring today, I mean we're all football guys, and I think if any of us could pick position groups, if you could pick a position group on your team to be like your strongest group that you could rely on the most, I think we'd probably all pick O-line, D-line, right? And I was looking at myself in the mirror, metaphorically, and I was like, you know what, like this is a group that is the most important on our team, like on anybody's team, and they're probably, usually, don't get the recognition they deserve, right? Except unless you're Avery, and that's very deserved, right? But, uh, you know, as a, as a group, we don't get the recognition, well, we, I wasn't a lineman, but these guys don't get the recognition they deserve, and I opened it up to my old lineman, my D lineman, and said, hey, I want to give you guys recognition for the work you put into the weight room and the commitment that you've shown each other and your teammates, and that's why we got the big group here today. So I'll start on my, uh, my far right is Travis Robertson, who's a 26, plays O-line, will play some D-line for us next year. Uh, next to him, senior Josh Bryant, 
who we're looking forward to uh, stepping up and playing defensive line. Uh, learned a ton last year, he's ready to step into the role. Uh, next to him is Jeremiah Benson, a 26 who started every game on offense last year, and we're looking forward to play some defensive snaps as well this year. Uh, next to me is Kamari Pittman, who uh, played a ton on defense, uh, defensive line for us last year. Uh, next to me on my left is Ashton McCoy, uh, who's a senior, played on the old line at center for us. Next to him is Dwayne Broom, who is a rising senior, started every game at left guard for us. And then next to him on my far left is Jay Gardenhire, who will be playing O-line for us as well. Um, and I'm, I'm, like I said, I, I won't get too much into it, but like we're, I'm just really fortunate for this group. Just to, I, I know you guys have been sitting here for a long time and we're last, but just to try to give them the credit they deserve. Uh, We've had a little bit of a dynasty in terms of like inside of our school building. We have the, there's this award called the Sunshine Award. It's not a Sunshine Award, but it's a thing they do at the, sen not an athletic award, at the Seniors Honors Convocation, where all the kids get like their awards for graduation. They give it out to one junior male and one female every year. So it's like an award in our building about a rising senior that exemplifies everything that they're supposed to in the school building. Three straight years, we had offensive linemen in our program win that award, going back to Terrell Thurman, Amir Herring, and last year it was Alex Walton. Uh, Dwayne was a finalist last year. I voted for him. He did not win the award, but none, nothing else. It shows you, I guess, the character. It's a position where when we're between the lines, and you guys know this, these guys have to be mean, physical, nasty. They got to move people against their will, or you know, if you're on the other side of it, you're, you're trying to hold up people that are moving you against their will. But you know, when they step off the field in the classroom and in the hallways, they're leaders. And their teachers look up to like count on them, rely on them. Their peers look up to them. And uh, you know, I'm grateful for them. And you know, I just want to give them, again, the, the recognition they deserved. Um, like everybody else said, it, this league's a grind. We're excited. We're ready to get going. And uh, we're ready to just kind of turn the, the page on the calendar to Monday, where I've been telling these guys for weeks, stuff's about to get real. So every bit of work that you guys have all done all summer, all off season, it's, it's all for tomorrow, or Monday, excuse me. It's all for Monday, so just be ready and uh, you know, wish everybody the best of luck. Thank you. It was very interesting when West Bloomfield brought their entire line for media day. When you look at the players they got, of course, they do have um, a transfer in Jay Gardenhire, um, who is one of the, um, he's a really, really big guy. And, you know, you look at what he brings, he's going to bring, it's going to be huge for West Bloomfield heading into the year. Um, also players to know about with them is Josh Tate at running back. You got um, Elijah Durham at wide receiver. You got, um, you also got um, the quarterback situation, Jamal Shakespeare. You got, um, you got Bo Jackson at quarterback. Um, you know, so when you, there's a lot of proven pieces over at West Bloomfield. Um, so I did catch up with Coach Jack Hilberts to talk about the state of the Lakers um, with an interview. I got the coach of the Lakers, Coach Jack Hilbers here. Um, coach, obviously you brought the linemen over. Yeah. Um, so how is, um, so you talk about this team here, obviously you do have a quarterback in Bo Jackson. So talk about the Lakers in your eyes. Well, you know, like we have a lot of guys that I think are really good players. Uh, not a lot of them have a ton of experience playing a lot of varsity minutes, just to be honest. Uh, we brought the line because I think, like I said, in front of the group, they're a strength of the team. They do all the little things right way. They're leaders in the weight room, leaders in the school, all stuff like that. Um, but we also have a ton of guys on defense. We started 10 seniors on defense last year. And some of those guys were rotational players. We had some sophomores get on the field, and we're going to be really counting on them to take that next step. And that'll probably determine how good of a team we are. Talk about the schedule. You hope it's murderous. You look at Chippewa Valley week one. Um, talk about the schedule. Uh, all nine teams were in the playoffs last year. Uh, there's a state champion on there, a uh, few regional teams. I can't remember if Seahome was in the final four of the region in Division Two, but they were at least in the region. Uh, Clarkson was in the regional against us. So, I mean, they weren't just playoff teams. They were winning games in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, obviously Lake Orion was not in the regional, but just as good enough to be there. They had a phenomenal season, and we kind of expect nothing less from them again. So, like you said, it, it's... It's really hard, it's challenging. We know every week's difficult. It's not coach speak or hyperbole. It's if you know if you don't bring it every week in your preparation and uh, I guess your mentality, you're gonna lose. 
And if you can qualify for the playoffs, that really benefits you because that's what the playoffs are. If you don't bring it that week, you're going to lose and your season's over. What is the expectation here, Coach? Really just go out and compete. Like, like you said, the schedules, as you said, uh, murderous, is really challenging. If we go out there and just compete and like trust our process, we think by the end of the year we'll be in a spot where we got a shot. Thank you really much, Coach. Yeah, of course. Other players I forgot to mention, of course, Cameron Flowers and also and Brody Picard. Um, Coach Hilbers are really excited about heading into the year for West Bloomfield. I also got a podcast up the Lakers talking to Coach Jack Hilbers. I also will post that on my blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. So when you look at West Bloomfield's schedule, I mean, like, it is interesting. I mean, combined records, 71 and 32, when you look at the records that, um, that West Bloomfield is playing from last year. So opening up week one with Chippewa Valley in the swamp. Um, you know, obviously Chippewa Valley's got a new quarterback, a new coach um, in there. So it should be an interesting matchup week one between the um, Big Reds of Chippewa Valley and the Lakers of West Bloomfield. Week two, they take on the Falcons of Groves. Um, of course, last year, West Bloomfield went into Beverly Hills and laid a whooping on Groves. Um, it was a blowout in that one over there. So it's going to be a really interesting match of week two, <laughs> excuse me, over there at Beverly Hills. Um, week three, take on Adams at Adams. Um, it's going to be interesting. Um, obviously, you know, we know that rivalry between Adams and West Bloomfield. Last year, West Bloomfield knocked off Adams twice, including in the playoffs. So that should be a really interesting matchup right there. Um, week four, um, they take on A&T. Um, A&T obviously is a different team now. They lost a lot of talent from a year ago, but still West Bloomfield did knock off A&T in the regular season, but A&T got them in the state semifinals last year on the final play. So that should be really interesting there. Week five, West Bloomfield's got to go back to Clarkston to take on the Wolves. Of course, um, West Bloomfield lost at Clarkston last year in a high-scoring game, but they got them back in the regional final on a field goal, uh, on a field goal miss um, from Clarkston. Um, so that should be a really interesting matchup there. And then week six, Lake Orion. I know it's their Hall of Fame match, I believe, at West Bloomfield. Um, that should be a fun matchup of, um, you know, that could be a shootout in the making. I remember last year was a defensive slugfest where Lake Orion ended up winning that one 17-13. Um, that could be a really interesting matchup there. Um, week eight, week seven, they take on Oxford. Um, that, it's going to always be a trap game anytime, even if it's at the Swamp, and that's where the game's at this year. So that should be really interesting there. Week eight, they take on Seaholm. Um, Seaholm, of course, runs the Veer. Um, it's a tough match for the Maples, taking on a, um, a team that's very athletic like West Bloomfield is. And then week nine, a very tough matchup for them against Roseville. So that should be a really, really daunting task for West Bloomfield. Um, when you look at the Lakers this year, there are a lot of question marks, especially on the defensive side of the football. Um, that schedule, it's not going to be any easier. All those teams as mentioned were playoff teams last year. so. When you look at West Bloomfield this year, a lot of excitement for the Lakers. Um, but when you look at that, when we look at West Bloomfield, it's going to come down to is can West Bloomfield, you know, get the offensive intensity like they've been in years past. Obviously, getting Jay Gardenhire is a big deal. Um, getting, of course, you got Bo Jackson at quarterback. Jamal Shakespeare can also play quarterback and also in the secondary. I am very concerned about the secondary for the Lakers. And I know my um, good friend, um, at Civic Center TV, Tyler Keft, um, when we talked on the podcast um, a couple weeks ago, um, we mentioned the same thing. So when you look at West Bloomfield this year, of course, a lot of those games this year, he will have this year um, coverage of Laker football, of course, on the um, TV side, Civic Center TV, and also on the radio side. I think it's 88.3. I think I don't know what the radio is, part of it is, but I know he does a really good job um, covering West Bloomfield football, and I expect him to do the same this season. So with West Bloomfield this year, a lot of excitement for them. Um, quarterbacks, a big question mark for me. They got the running game situated. They got the receiving game situated. Um, line, offensive line is a strength as well. Question on the defense side of the football. So there are a lot of questions when you look at West Bloomfield on that side of the football. So without further ado, let's look at the um, projections for the um, division I call the group of deaths. And this is the red division. And there's a reason why I have everybody in that division all painted in red.
because I expect all five teams to be in the playoffs. Because when you look at that schedule, playing in the red is really difficult. West Bloomfield, obviously, I had them favored. You know, I got defensive concerns. It wouldn't surprise me to go eight and one. It wouldn't surprise me to go seven and two. Adams, I don't know why the coaches had Adams ranked um, ranked low to start the year. I mean, I know they got concerns up front, but it's Tony Petrino, it's Devere. I mean, like, now who knows? Adams could be as high as as high as eight, but maybe as low as seven. I mean, like, I think Adams could be a very scary team this year. Um, Lake Orion, they could be as good as eight. Um, I think when you look at the Dragons, I think that, um, you know, I think, you know, when you look at them, I think my concerns at running back and linebacker, you know, it could be higher if they answer that um, running back and linebacking situation. Um, but I think the Dragons, they can win seven games. I think they can win seven, they can win eight games. I mean, like, they're that good. I mean, they're that talented enough. Clarkson, if there's a team that I think could be most vulnerable to missing the playoffs, it's Clarkson. And the reason why is because they're scheduled. Because you look at Athens and Bloomfield Hills on there, it's kind of it kind of worries me a little bit with that with those two teams. Um, despite you know what I mean, those two teams, you know what I mean, if they struggle enough, you know what I mean, in Clarkston, they could be a team that's pushing, maybe trying to get in, you know, trying to get in late in the playoffs. Um, a team that I really don't have an issue with their schedule is the Oxford Wildcats, and their schedule is murder. I mean, you really look at it here. I mean, like, if they win three games on that schedule, they're still getting in the playoffs because of that, because of, of the toughness of that schedule when you look at it. So, Oxford's got a really difficult schedule. It wouldn't surprise anybody here if everybody, if the, if the, um, the, if the records, like, you know what I mean? If, 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 if a team that wins, like, uh, has even three losses can win this division. I mean, that's how tough this division is. I mean, like, you know, that the red is going to be so battle tested that it's going to take a lot, you know what I mean, when you look at to knock any of these teams out of the playoffs. And, you know, I kind of wish the MHA would, you know, split these teams up, make these teams, you know, maybe send West Bluefield South, send Clarkson West, send Oxford North, you know, send Lake Orion East. I mean, like, you know, send Adams, you know what I mean, a little bit, a little southeast. I mean, like, so, I mean, I would love to see these five teams, instead of having to beat each other up every single time, battle it out when they get the postseason against different competition. And we'll see what the, we'll see what it made of. So, we'll see what happens. All right, man, I wish everybody the best of luck this season. Um, uh, and uh, we'll be in the season right now fully. Of course, you make sure, of course, follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. I wish everybody in the OA, especially the red, the white, the blue, and the gold, the best of luck as we head into the season. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you all next week. Everybody. Take care, and God bless, and see you all next week. God bless all.